good morning friends. I come to you once again this morning from Mulangilo Kitwe, uh, Zambia. Uh, I'm one and the same person, Joseph, from uh, in South Africa. Uh, I just want to share a little this morning with you saying, um, I love you, God's children. I really love you. If you look right now where I am, there are banana, bananas, there are trees, uh, there, are, it's, uh, there is nature here where I am right now. Now, this nature, and it's morning, it's early in the morning, around maybe uh, 8 o'clock here in, um, in Southern Central Africa. Uh, I love you, saints. I don't know what to, how to say it. But what I want to say is this. Uh, you and me who believe in the word of God, who believe in the Bible, we have to come to accept the reality and the fact that we are living in the day in which all scriptures, as promised by our Lord Jesus, has been fulfilled. Now, when I say our Lord Jesus, it doesn't confuse me. I'm sure it confuses you because sometimes you hear me say, our Lord William Maron Brenham, you, 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 it disturbs you because it confuses you. But I, I, would, I would want you to go back in the days of our Lord Jesus. There were people who really believed in Jehovah of the Old Testament. And believing in Jehovah was not a myth for, uh, for, 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 for more than a thousand years, the Jews were followers and were worshippers of the Jehovah God, the God that appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai. I want you to understand this. When God appeared to, 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 to Moses on Mount Sinai, he revealed himself by the name Yahweh. And that name was not known to the fathers of Moses, which is the, the ancestors of Moses, which was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God was never known as Yahweh to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that our faith today, the Christian faith, the, 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 the Muslim faith, the Jewish faith, they all trace their origin from Abraham. The Jews may fight one another with the Arabs. The Jews may fight one another with Christians. But all the three religions, they trace their origin from Abraham. It was God that called Abraham, our father by faith through Christ today, from his country, his kindred, his family, from his people, and called him away from, from uh, Babylon, that side, Mesopotamia. And the, the voice said, come, separate yourself from among your people, and I'll give you a land, and I shall bless you, and you shall be a blessing to the nations. Today, Abram is the blessing to all nations. But I, I want you to, 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 to mark this thing. When God appeared to Abraham and walked with Abraham, he had a name. Every time God comes on the scene to, to bring deliverance, to bring a fresh move, he always comes on the scene with a name. He was known as, as, as El Shaddai, the breasted one to, Abra to Abraham. He was known as Elohim. He was never known. He was never known by the name Jehovah. And God blessed Abram by those names. And he walked with the Abram of seed, uh, Abram's seed in the natural, which is Isaac, by that name, and Jacob. But when it came to Moses, the children of Israel were again put in bondage. Had the, the seed of God, or the natural seed of Abraham, was 
put in bondage and God had to bring a fresh deliverance. And every time the fresh deliverance comes, God comes with a fresh name for the particular work of deliverance of that time. And God revealed himself, Jehovah God, the creator of all heavens and earth. On this one we all agree, we, there's no misunderstanding, that the pillar of fire that appeared in the burning bush is Jehovah God, the creator of all heavens and earth. But he said, I was not known to Abraham by this name, Yahweh, which is the Lord, which is Jehovah, which is Jehovah. And now, I want you to see, because there was a work of deliverance and he had to come with a name, and that name was Yahweh. But after, after 1,500 years, God again, there was a need again to bring deliverance. This time, the children of Israel were now in, in another form of bondage. They were now in the bondage of sin. They had been trapped uh, in Judaism. They turned the true religion of God into tradition. And God had to send this time his son Jesus. And then he put his name on Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus was the first person to carry a human name of God. Blessed be the name of God. Now, I want you to understand this. The name Jesus was there even before Jesus was born. However, that name Jesus really... Jesus is a Greek name. It's not even a Jewish name. It's not even there in the Jewish literature. It's a Greek name. This is why the people in the East, they say Jesus is a Greek God. Why? The name of Jesus was there even before Jesus was born. Notwithstanding, the, the name Jesus is the same name with Joshua. That is the, uh, the, 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 the Greek. They translate the name Yeshua to Jesus. The Greeks, they, in Greek, they translated the name Yeshua. Yeshua to Jesus. To Jesus. To, 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 to Jesus. Now, I want to say this. When you say the name, when we are using the name Jesus, Jesus, many of you, 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 real, you actually think that's the way Jesus was called. Oh, that's the name the Lord was called. No, he was never called Jesus in his day. In fact, Jesus never had that name Jesus in his day. It's a name that was made afterwards. In fact, it was made, it was not even made in the early church. The early church and the, the successive generations never knew about that name. That name just popped up recently in the middle uh, millennium there. After uh, I, I think even after the Dark Ages, that's when that's when the name Jesus uh, was brought about. Notwithstanding, God revealed Himself with a new name when He came to deliver mankind from the sin through the sacrifice of Jesus. But then, to you believers who knows the message, I'm sure other Christians may not understand what I'm about to say. There was another, uh, after Christ died for our sins, died for the sins of the people, again the church was trapped in sin. And we entered into dark ages in which the life of God, the life of church, went back to the ground. The true church of the living God that started on the day of Pentecost, which had the name of Jesus, was killed, my brothers and sisters. That church was killed by the Roman gods. How was it killed? The Christian church got married to the Roman gods and the true church, the true life of God was squeezed out of the church. And we ended up with what we have today. First we had the Catholic denomination as the mother church, the first denomination to separate itself from the from the true church that started on the day of judgment on the day of Pentecost and then they started the Herak thing which was not there you who read the Bible you clearly know the life of Peter 
Peter was a married man. We read in the Bible that Jesus went into the house of Peter and the, 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 the mother-in-law of Peter was sick and Jesus prayed for them. But they say Peter was the Pope, the first Pope. But Peter had a family and children. And the Popes of today, they don't have families and children. They say that they don't have, we know. But we know better. But the, the person they claim to be the head of the church, he was a family man. He was a family man. And they never had this which they have today, the hellac thing of trying to make uh, the apostles like they are kings. Because the Pope is really the king, actually, to the, to, to, to the Catholic Church. They may not admit it, but the Pope is really the king. And the Pope right now, as I'm speaking, he knows that I'm speaking the truth. The Pope is actually the king in the Catholic Church. Maybe Catholics did not know it. The Pope is really the king of the Roman Empire today. This is why all presidents of the world, they go to give honor to Vatican. Any president in America or anywhere, they go to Rome there. Even the, the Vladimir Putin, everyone, they have to go there to give honor to the king, the king of the Roman Empire. You see, you might think that the Roman Empire is seized. The Roman power has not seized. It only changed itself from political into uh, uh, religion, re religious. It's still reigning supremely, but through a religious figure. Now, so, so my, 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 I just brought in this for one thing. I wanted to show you that eh, the church which, which was started by Jesus eh, just went on for a few years eh, and, that, and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and, and death started clipping into that church. By the fourth generation, that church had been destroyed. Something else had been formed. And what came out of the Catholic Church is what we have today, denominations. They are the daughters of the mother church. According to the scripture, they are the daughters to the mother church. The mother church. Look today, we have the Pentecostals, we have the Seventh Day, we have the, the Watchtower, we have the Baptists, we have the Methodists. You, you, you read the Bible. When you go into the Bible, do you see any such things? All these churches that we have these today, and I spare not one church. You might say maybe I'm sparing the message church. No, I'm not sparing any church. There's only one true church. Hallelujah. It's the living word made flesh in this day. The living word of God made flesh. That's the true church of the living God. You don't join it. You are born by predestination in that church. You are born into that church by predestination. You are the living oracle, the living tabernacle of God walking on earth. And the signs of the living God will follow the living church. Hallelujah. When I say the signs of the living church, I'm not saying, oh, you start doing all these things that we are seeing, the fantasies which they are doing today in the shows. No, I'm talking about the real life. God living in a man. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. The living idol of God. The living image of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want to say this. We got trapped. We got trapped. The church was trapped again in sin. And we needed redemption again. I know you are taught that we don't need redemption. Jesus died for us. Oh, go on with that gospel. Go on with that gospel. Look, it is true that Jesus paid the penalty of sin. But after paying the penalty of sin, the church of the living God was trapped again into sin. Denominationalism is the mark of the beast. Denominationalism is the mark of the beast. And the, seeds, the seed of Abraham or the seed of God in the denominations needed deliverance. Thus, according to the scripture, we are promised in the book of Malachi 4 that, Behold, I will send you the great prophet Elijah before the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed. Remember, there was a physical Sodom and Gomorrah. 
which was destroyed by fire. There was a physical Sodom and Gomorrah which was destroyed by fire. Today we have got the spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah which is to be destroyed again by the fire of God and the fire that man has made for himself, the atomic bombs. Now, I know many people, they think that uh, things will be just the way they are. Yes, the world is going to go on, but there's going to be a major destruction, a major catastrophe physically which will take place. The Bible says, God says, I will not destroy man again by the rain, but I have preserved it for fire. And Malachi 4 says, the world shall be burned by fire, and the, the, the elect shall come out and trod upon the ashes of the, of, the, uh, 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 of the proud, of the wicked, even as calves uh, in the store. That scripture has to be fulfilled. Scripturally, it has already been fulfilled. But physically, it's also to be fulfilled. This is why the world has stocked up nuclear bombs, nuclear bombs. They didn't know what they were doing, but God, they were working in the hands of God. All these people, the Russia, the America, the superpowers, the China, they've been working in the hands of... Man traps himself in his education, in his wisdom. God really do not destroy man. Man destroys himself by his wisdom. Just before this thing happens, the Bible promises to send the great prophet Elijah. Elijah, there will be a physical prophet that is to come to, to the earth. And that prophet, it will be God demonstrating himself physically in human flesh to his church. Just like God demonstrated, demonstrated himself physically to Abram before Sodom was burned. Just like God demonstrated himself physically to Israel before Titus, the general of Roman, destroyed Jerusalem. The same thing before the United States of America and Russia and everything is destroyed by atomic fire. God sent William Marron Brenham back to the earth to display God in human flesh again. To display Jesus Christ afresh to the people. To bring redemption to the bride, to the elected. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. To make a way, God's provided way for his people in this day. Was the prophet William Aaron Brenham. The message that came to this day is God in human flesh. My brothers, my sisters, there is nowhere to hide except in the living word that has come in this day. There is nowhere to run to except in the living word. Christ, the Son of God, the word that came again in human form in our day and proved that the same Jesus that walked or the same Holy Ghost that walked in, in, in Galilee, that walked in the shores of Galilee, that preached at Jerusalem, is living today, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. My brothers, my sister, if the God that once lived in Jesus has come in our day and has proved to be alive among us, it proves that even us, his children, we can never perish. God will make a way. God has made a way. We have eternal life. We can no more die. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Oh, my. The Bible says, Jesus himself said in Luke 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 8, you who are trying to get what I'm saying, lead for yourself. Luke, said, Luke chapter 8, verse 8, it says, but when the Son of Man shall return to the earth, will he found any faith? It has nothing to do with flying in the air, the message of the Pentecostals and the, and the message churches of today. It's a misunderstanding of the scripture. They want fantastic things, but God does not work like that. God works in simplicity. When the Bible spoke of the coming of John the Baptist, the, the Bible says trees will be clapping, leaves will be clapping, mountains will be limping. No, those things are the, are, are the scripture interpretation. I, I, I don't have, I'm very poor in grammar, but, but, but by the Holy Ghost you are able to catch what I'm trying to say. When the Bible promises, the coming of John when it was promising, 
the, a lot of things was said that, that people were looking forward to see physical things but it was not physical things it was spiritual interpretation it was a spiritual it, it, they had spiritual I interpretation for instance the bible says the trees will be jumping up and clapping it's not the trees it's the saints who are elected who will receive the ministry of john hallelujah blessed be the name of god when he says the crooked roads would be made smooth the mountains will be paved it's those people who, who, had, who had put, them, put themselves up who will be brought down. And the law varies will be brought up. The lower people who will be raised up by the message of that day. So it's the same thing today. The Bible says, when it says that, when the Son of Man shall come to the earth, in Luke chapter 18 verse 8, will he found any faith? And the Son of Man has come and he hasn't found faith but only in the few elected ones. So, the, so was it in the days of Sodom. When the message went into Sodom, only three people came out. Abraham was already out. So was it in the days of Jesus. Only the few elected ones. By the time Jesus was, was crucified, only 11 people were standing with Jesus. The rest had prayed away from him. Even the 11, they prayed away from him in the end only to be gathered on the day of Pentecost. O oh, Church of the Living God, read the Bible and look at what you are seeing today, what they are calling churches, what they are calling the move of God. Compare it with the Bible and tell me whether it's the same thing. And also, read the Bible, find out what does the Bible promise. Remember, the true seed of God, they look for the promises of God, and when they see them, they cut them and hang their lives to the promise. And I'm telling you, the millennium we want to see in the physical, you will never see it. The only thing you are going to see is suffocation from the bombs and the destruction. That's the thing that you will see. Right now you are seeing all manner of diseases, all manner of weather, uh, I mean, uh, weather changing, climate change, and all these things which Jesus said will take place, they are taking place, but you still cannot see on the spiritual side that God has also fulfilled, fulfilled his words. We are the privileged people, and who are the witnesses of the coming of the Lord in this day? I am the witness, the living witness of the coming of Christ in my day, the Son of God demonstrated in a Son of Man. Hallelujah. God coming in the physical form for his church, for his marriage. Blessed be the name of the living God. There are many things that you need, we need to learn since. These things have already been revealed. All these things like resurrection, resurrection from the graves. You are waiting to see people coming from the graves. You will never see that. It's got a spiritual interpretation. Oh my, I don't know how to put it. Oh, Lazarus was raised from a grave. We are also waiting to see people coming from the graves. My, 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 my. What about the people that uh, died in an aeroplane, aeroplane and they busted and, 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 and their bodies were consumed? What about people who were uh, destroyed on the sea? Uh, which, 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 which cemetery are they going to come out from? And if you say, oh, the Bible says they'll come out from all these things, lead carefully there, lead carefully there. Go, God bless you this morning, saints. I, I will speak with everything that is in my heart. It will make sense to some people out there. It will make me a fool and a close person to billions, but there will be a few there who are ordained to it and they will receive it. God bless you this morning. I am Brother Joseph reporting this morning to the saints. In the name of Christ, the anointed word for this day, God coming again in the physical form of a man called William Aaron Branham. Amen.